Hi everyone, the Women's World Championship ended a couple of days ago and it ended with victory for Zhu Wenjun. It was an all Chinese battle between Lei Tingye and Zhu Wenjun and it was uh, the reigning world champion Zhu Wenjun who came out on top. This is her fourth title victory and she now equals Ho Yifan for uh, the title number of titles won. She takes home $300,000 uh, while uh, Le Tingye takes home $200,000. So that's uh, quite a sizable amount of money for both the players. The tournament was 12 games, very closely contested. In fact, uh, if we look here, there were some very nice uh, tweets, uh, especially Anish Giri saying congratulations to Ju Wenjun for retaining her title. What made this match particularly uh, interesting for me to follow amongst other things was the high level of preparation. And I think both the teams got in top players to support them. Ju Wenjun had Wei Yi and Hari Krishna in her team of seconds while uh, Le Tingye had Temur Rajabov and her boyfriend Raymond Song, who is also a grandmaster in, in her team. So that's how the, the match was very, very uh, high level of play. We're going to go through each and every game. What the main aim of this video is to give you a breakdown of this entire match. And also, uh, test you at the critical moments, make you think. So you can watch this video here or you can also watch it on Chessranga. The link is in the description so that you know you can start solving it over there. It's an interactive format by Chess Base India and you will enjoy it a lot. Okay, so let's begin. The first game uh, was Le Tingye with the white pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you questions but also show you a bit of the opening to because you know you can know what the trend was like. So with Le Tingye, she opened her games with one e4 mainly. And Ju Wenjun was going for the Berlin rookie one. And I think this game was a very, very solid encounter. But Le Tingye's preparation was brilliant, you know, uh, you could sense a lot of Rajabo's uh, ideas there. And White is a pawn down, but has very good compensation. So this was the position and we reached this moment. And I want you to take some time and figure out what would you do here with White. White to play, this is the moment. In the game, Le Tingye took on G takes F5. And after Bishop takes F5, while she was still better, the game eventually ended in a draw. Uh, there, were, there was a better move in this position. And if you found Bishop B4, give yourself a pat on the back because this is the best move. The idea is to take here and then pick up the Bishop. And if you try to move your bishop away, then I take this pawn. You come in and take here. I go rook e7. And now b7 is hanging. And there's a lot of trouble here. This is also under pressure. The king is tied down. So king f7 was played. And after I take, bishop takes. In came a check. King f6. And now a very nice move, c4. take bishop c4 and I think this would have been a very sizable edge for white for Le Tingye but she actually took on f5 and after bishop f5 here the game eventually uh, went on. White is still better but it ended in a draw so the score was half half at this point and uh, we move on to the second game of this match where Ju Wenjun now had the white pieces. So it was, you know, first couple of games are always very interesting because you get to see what the players are coming up with. The, what are the openings that they are going to play? So now Ju Wenjun had the white pieces. She played d4 
and we soon had the Tarash with C5, three symmetrical variation. And in fact, Le Tingye was very well prepared in this game uh, with the black pieces and you could see it. Bishop went back, Rook C8. And here, Zhu Wenjun played Bishop B5, Le Tingye played A6. And I think uh, this is the moment where white has to decide what to do. And if you were white, what would you have done? It's not an easy question, but I think it was very important for Ju Wenjun to take. Take here. And now let's say if you take with the rook, then I can go bishop f6. You have to take with the queen, otherwise your structure is ruined. And I take on d5. And you see this rook is unguarded on e8. So while black does have compensation, it's maybe not enough and white should be better here. Um, b takes c6 was possible, but after queen d3, attacking the pawn on a6, you go a5 and rook c1. It feels like white has a small pull in this position. In the game, bishop a4 was played by Ju Wenjun and I liked how Le Tingye played now. She first pushed the bishop away, then she pushed the other bishop away, then she took and played queen b6, putting pressure on d4 and then she removed this knight here. I think all in all, she was playing brilliantly at this point and maybe it would have been nice to go knight a5, keep the pressure in the position. Knight is coming to c4 and this does look pretty strong like b3, rook c8. I think black has some pressure for sure. So this was, this would have been uh, quite good for black but in the end king f8 was played and then eventually this game uh, petered out into equality. So the score was then 1-1 but we already had got a glimpse of what both these players were doing so uh, the the match there was one thing about this match which was that the first half the first six games were happening in shanghai and the second six games were happening in chongqing uh, both in china and i think shanghai uh, the base of ju wenjun and chongqing uh, the base of le tingye that's how this match was sort of uh, built up and now in the second, in the this is now the third game. Le Tingye again had the white pieces. She opened with e4. And once again, they went into the Berlin. And anti-Berlin was played by white. And bishop g5 was played. Ju Wenjun was surprised now. She took a lot of time at this point. And after a6, Le Tingye took d4, takes bishop back, castles h6 bishop f4 i i think this was not a good move bishop h4 should have been played by by letting ye but she went bishop f f4 rook e8 and now queen c2 was a mistake so it's your move once again what do you play here with black black to play you can pause the video you can think uh, because this is the moment where Ju Wenjun actually managed to find a very good idea. So the move that was played here is knight e4. A very strong move, very nicely done. Takes and now bishop f5. The knight is pinned, tried to protect it, but the pawn comes in. Knight e5 and now bishop takes was played, but I think d4 would have been quite, quite nice. Because uh, after knight c6, there is queen d5. But bishop e4, queen c3, queen f6, bishop g3, rook e6, king h1. And actually here, at this point, this move king h1 gave black an opportunity to play something very interesting. So it's your move. What would you play here as black? One idea is definitely to go h5. If you found this, well done maybe with the idea of h4 but rook e5 is such an interesting exchange sack because now if you take with the uh, with the bishop then i have queen takes f2 
and now G2 is under pressure. This would be a very, very difficult uh, position to play. Um, and if you take with the pawn here, then I go queen e6. And this is again great compensation for black. In fact, black is doing better because these two bishops are very strong along with the central pawn mass. So this was a good idea. Uh, as things happened, Le Tingye managed to hold on here. And this is the moment where things sort of went down uh, the route of equality. So the score was now one and half, one and half. Once again, Ju Wenjun now had the white pieces. And we were all thinking, what would Ju Wenjun do in this um, game? Because she was going d4 and she continued with it. But this time, Le Tingye decided to not play c5, which she did in game 2. But rather, she went d takes c4. And we had this very theoretical line where once again, Le Tingye was better prepared. And white was, I mean, this is all theory. We can go to a moment in the game, uh, deep in the end game at this point. I think Ju Wenjun had some pressure in the game. Um, what would you play here as white? White to play, you need to figure out um, what would be your way of putting more pressure here. Black has just played the move f6. So, the best move in this position is bishop h5. And this is a very powerful move. If you were thinking of a check, it's also an interesting move. Let's say king g7. But it's not easy to make progress. You go rook b7, it's, you go back. So, bishop h5 is very powerful. Because now the most natural move f takes e5 actually fails to a very strong move by white, which is f5. The idea is to play f6, bishop takes and rook f7 check, winning the piece. It's very difficult to stop it. Say rook a3, f6, check, king here. You can give some more checks, but now you see this is the problem. I'm giving you a check here. It's a mate. Also, my pawn is coming up ahead. And I think this position is is gone, you know, uh, white is winning. So bishop h5, you have to go for the move f5. And then after I take this pawn, you must go bishop h4. Then I take another pawn, you go king g7. And you play it this way. And I think there are good drawing chances for black, but it's not so easy to, to play this entire line, you know. So I think this is where... Ju Wenjun definitely had her chance in this game, but she went e6 and after h5, this was uh, not a difficult position to hold. And uh, in the end, the game ended in a draw. So the score was now 2-2, uh, but you can already sense that both the players were very much in fighting mood. You know, there were no short draws. There were no games that they were cutting off the fights or anything of that sort. So that was very nice to see. Now in game number five, Le Tingye again had the white pieces. She again opened the game with one e4. Five, and this was the first decisive game. She went for the Italian. After playing two games of bishop b5, she said, let's go for the Italian. Knight f6, d3, bishop c5. And I think they reached a very normal position in the Italian you take with the knight because if you take with the pawn then there's d5 e5 and knight e4 black is doing fine here that could also be another way to play but it seemed like Ju Wenjun was doing okay here um, structurally white is better rook d1 bishop d6 and b4 and i think this is the moment where uh, the first question in this game black to play what would you do 
would you take on b4 first or would you play bishop d6 okay so very important was to go bishop d6 because if you go b5 bishop b7 now the biggest advantage is that this position is kind of blocked in the game she went a b c b and then bishop d6 but this turned out to be a very bad uh, decision because after b5 now the if you go bishop b7 the very fact that you have this knight to c4 and a5 break as well very important means that black is in big trouble here so bishop d7 and i really liked how letting ye played this she was very calm she got a bishop here then she put it in the center she took the knight because the knight was jumping in the, in this central square queen takes rook put the rook on the central square and then maneuvered is her bishop to attack this pawn and again this little moves you know g3 king g2 h4 just putting a lot of pressure now this is a weakness somehow h5 so she first broke with f4 again a nice plan takes bishop takes rook b7 and now it's your move how do you put more pressure here as white slightly subtle here Yes, if you went for the move e5, it's not a bad idea. It's a playable idea. But after queen f7, black is sort of pinning this. So what I liked a lot is this move queen e2. Hitting here. And she found it. Provoking e6, uh, g6 and then e5. Classy. And now if you were to go like queen f7, you already have e6. So you can't do that. So she went queen a8 and now what is the most accurate move the final accurate move to get home the full point yes just queen f3 very powerful there is a pin that is happening here and i want to go rook d7 next so f5 rook d7 take take e6 and she won this pawn so now there are two passers b5 and e6 and they are just unstoppable. And white won the piece. And this was a very, very important win because now it was 3-2 in the favor of Le Ting Ye. And you could, you could see that Le Ting Ye was playing really well in this, in this match. Uh, there was, she was not putting a foot wrong and she already had a one point lead. So the, the reigning world champion, Ju Wenjun, was under a lot of pressure. Now, sixth game, and this was the last game in her home city, Shanghai. Um, and what I liked about this game is that Le Tingye, now Ju Wenjun first changed, she took. Uh, earlier, she was playing knight f3, and every time uh, Le Tingye was coming up with new ideas, like after this, this, one game she played c5, one game she took. So this time, Ju Wenjun said, I'll only take it and then I'll see. But Le Tingye turned out to be very well prepared. The Tarash was played and takes, takes, check, take here. And the nice thing was that her preparation ran so deep here. Knight e7 was played. Castles. I think um, even though white has the bishop pair here. Black is quite active and I think white has to be very accurate to, to make something of this edge. But she wasn't and black equalized quite well. I like this one moment which I want to just point out in this game. Bishop e4 and she went bishop b6 here. What do you play as black? Black to play. So here you will see that this is hanging and this is hanging but very important is not to panic and she played this move rook d7 I really liked and admired this move very calm move because if you go rook b8 then after rook e4 rook b6 I play the move b4 and my bishop is popping out for, from here and this is a very good position for white. 
rook d7 is very well done because now if you take here i'm going to take here that happened in the game it's equal and if you were to play b4 with the idea of going bishop b3 check then i first take and let's say you take here then uh, by the way the bishop then i have knight e5 threatening the bishop and also this check winning this bishop so that's a tactical point to note and if you were to play a uh, pawn takes here then after knight e5 bishop check king g7 why why black is still clearly for choice because the structure has been broken so rook d7 was very well timed and then after this the game ended in a draw so again a very clean game by uh Le Tingye. and as we moved into the second half of this match at the halfway stage the score was three and half two and half in the favor of Le Tingye. so late now and now uh in the seventh game, Le Tingye had the white pieces again, and it was interesting to see if she could actually increase her lead. She opened the game with one e4, and now you can sense that Ju and Jun wanted to win. So she, instead of playing e4, e5, which was her main weapon, she went for Karo Khan. You know, some more chances, and I think she managed to muddy the waters. In fact, the position became so sharp at some point. Um, this this line was played where you keep the pawn on h4 it's getting more and more popular these days also Nepo played it with Vishy Anand at the global chess league and white here the position was around even or you can say white has compensation for the pawn but I think late Ye went very aggressive somewhere here um with the move g4 and i think now ju and jun started to strike back she came here she put her queen in the center the rook entered it was getting almost lost here for letting ye takes f5 take take and she took good move and now it's your move what do you play here as black black to play it's uh, not easy when your king is exposed, but also this king is exposed. And I think here was a moment to just breathe and figure out what to do. Knight f8 was a very nice maneuver. So you're putting your knight either on e6 or g6. And I think it's very difficult for white to get anything. Let's say, for example, you try to give this check. I take, you take with the pawn. And I go knight g6. Now the king is very safe on g8. And there are already ideas of knight h4 check with a fork. So very difficult here to, to play. And I think uh, Ju Wenjun flipped out a bit. She said, let me trade the queens. The end game could also be fine for me. You know, I can win there. But now what happened was um, white has activity. And also... In spite of being two pawns down, these pawns are very strong. So, Ju Wen, uh, Le Tingye again defended brilliantly. She got one pawn back. And in the end, she also lost both of her pawns here. Let's say uh, here. But again, the activity was just too much. And she won pawn back and she later on. This was a nice finish, by the way. Take here. If you take here, check and... So here 4-3 still leading the match and Ju Wenjun still thinking about what is the way to beat her opponent. Turns out that she managed to find the way to do it in the 8th game. And this was a very important game. Uh, and you will see how Ju Wenjun sort of evolved her strategy. She was going d4 in all the games. She realized that Le Tingye was very well prepared. I need to go out of theory. And so she played b3, e3, b3, bishop b2. And now even g3. And this really threw uh, Le Tingye off her game. And uh, gave a very fresh position. In fact, here Ju Wenjun for this move thought for nearly 20 minutes. And we reached a fresh position, which is what 
Ju Wen Jun wanted. She didn't want positions where Le Ting Ye was in her prep and just gave no advantage to to Ju. Uh, here is the one question which I wanted to ask in this game. What do you play here as white? White to move. So if you think about it deeply, uh, there are many interesting options. But the move that I like a lot and I think is also very instructive is the move uh, C5. And this is a very good example of giving something to get something. You are giving away the D5 square, but you are getting the B7 weakness and also sort of cramping down black position. And I think there's one famous game of Capablanca as well where he makes this move. So it's something to really learn. Knight d5, knight c4. And I like how uh, Le Tingye fought here. She gave up a pawn and managed to sort of unravel. So she's a pawn down here but has very good activity. And it seemed like again this game might end in a draw. But I was a bit surprised that here she didn't take this pawn. And this should have been equal. But instead she went knight b3. Takes. And again should have taken this pawn on a3. But fe. And now it's your move. What do you play here as white. White to move. Important move this moment. So one point could be to sort of save your pawn. Uh, but it's it doesn't work out so well. Because after take, take. Bishop f6, you can see these two bishops are very strong, very powerful. And uh, eventually the rook could come in or the rook could move here and this pawn might just be lost. So the move, the best move is bishop e5. If you found this well done, the bishop is very strongly placed. And the point is that after takes, there is rook e3. Bishop check. And now here white should have played knight e1 and i think she would have got a great chance you have both the pieces here and i want to take on c2 and then take on b3 so bishop d1 makes sense and now i go rook d3 attacking the bishop so you go rook c1 i go check king here and now this very classy moon knight d3 rook b1 and king h2 and what is happening is this check is coming up these pawns are very soft white has Perfect coordination and in spite of the material being less and equal, Ju Wen Jun has great chances. But she went here instead of knight e1, she went knight d4 and after take, take, I think black had great chances to hold. In fact, I'm, I'm surprised that Le Ting Ye lost this endgame because she has drawn easier endgames, uh, sorry, tougher endgames in this match. And she could have just played h5 here, just exchanging more pawns. I don't know, g5, h4 already sort of shuts down the box for this king, threatening rook c1, rook h1, uh, rook h1 mate. So, I don't know, she was maybe under some pressure at this point and Ju Wenjun converted this into a win, which was amazing because now the match was tied at 4-4. And I think this is where Ju Wenjun... You know, there's a difference between someone who's playing the World Championship match for the first time and someone who's playing the World Championship match for the fourth, fifth time. Because the thing is, she started to smell blood here. And you will see that in the ninth game, when Le Ting Ye had the white pieces and opened her game with one e4, instead of going for Karo Khan or e4, e5, she said... Time for Sicilian. I'm going to fight even more. I'm going to get this match in my control. And they played this line. Interesting one. E5, knight d5. And well, the main move here is queen c7. But bishop b7 is played before. Bishop e2, c5. And here Le Ting Ye played this new idea, a3. But uh, Ju Wen Jun played very well and in fact we came at this moment where the rook attacked the bishop. And I was thinking he'll, she'll go back bishop f6 but Ju Wen Jun played this move bishop e5. And the question to you is why did she give up a full piece here? Black to play. Yes, she found this move rook, c, rook f5 
and after queen d6 rook c5 and i think well there was a back rank made so you had to be careful although black was a pawn up letting ye understood the dynamics pretty well that she was she had a lot of activity and she got it back and in the end it was a rook end game which ended in a draw so it was four and a half four and a half but i definitely liked uh, ju wen jun's opening uh, choice there because she was in for fighting chess um going to game number 10 where ju wen jun had the white pieces i think once again uh, in this game she didn't get much i think uh, le ting ye played very well out of the opening and yeah this entire sequence with rookie six f4 you go bishop c5 trading this bishop so that this pawn becomes weak and then after take bishop takes rookie four so this pawn is weak you're going to lose this one but i take here bishop c4 and i go back And the trend continued, you know, giving up a pawn for activity. Le Tingye did that, did, has done this very well in this entire match. She continued, she got back her pawn and the game ended in a draw. So the score was 5-5 and now came the crucial last two games in the classical segment. If they managed to go to 6-6, they would go to tiebreakers with rapid and blitz. But... Here, I think, was Le Tingye's chance because she had the white pieces and so she kept up with e4 and then played the Italian. But Drew Benjun played very well. And in fact, knight b4, d5 was very smart. If you go c3, I'll take here, intermediate move. So takes, takes. And I think black had already equalized. There's this one cool moment in this game where it's black to move here, Ju Wenjun's move. What do you play here as black is the question. Yeah, so white is a pawn up. The last move was this sacrifice, knight takes e3. And the move here, well, she played rook, uh, sorry, she played rook h8, which was... Kind of equal after take, 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 take and queen a5. The game ended in a draw. But she had this classy move, bishop g5. The point is after takes, queen takes. Now you will see that this knight is hanging. So you have two defenses. One is rook h e1. The other is king d2. If you go king d2, then after rook f8, you are already in trouble because the queen is has to defend the knight. So you go queen g1 and now I can play takes, 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 takes and check and I win the game. So you would want to go rook h e1. Now again a very important move, rook f8. Not rook e8 because here if you put your rook there then king d2 and white is winning. There's no way to put more pressure. But first you dislodge the queen, queen has to go back. And now you play rook f3. And if king d2, you take on g3. Take on e3. Take on e3. And rook g2. And you win material. So this was a very good uh, tactic which was missed. She went rook h8. And then the game ended in a draw. So we went to the final game now. The scores at 5.5 each. Uh, and Ju Wenjun having the white pieces. And this time she said, it's time to go back to what I have prepared the most. Let me go to d4. No knight f3 business. Um, but now she played e3. Not c4 where it gave direct chances for black to be prepared and equalize. e3, c5, dc, e6, b4. And actually this is reversed uh, note boom. In queen's gambit declined. c3, take, take b6 check bishop here takes takes a4 takes and b5 and such a sharp position in the final game 
white has two passers black has the center very strong the position is actually uh, slightly better for black here or you can say equal bishop b2 bishop d6 castles castles knight d2 and rook fc8 queen c2 and she should have gone e5 the position remains interesting she would have gone maybe e4 here trying to fight for the c4 square c4 and you have to be careful not to allow c3 so you go rook f c1 and then maybe you have to keep this going you know bishop b4 or knight c5 but instead of e5 here she played the move c4 and this turned out to be a crucial error because bishop c3 was a great move you block the pawn you're going queen b2 you're threatening a5 so knight went to c5 a5 played excellent move and now knight b3 and it was now Ju Wenjun's turn to find the best move here to keep the advantage white to play the move here is rook a2 you might think oh but the problem is the rook is hanging and also the pawn and you may want to push forward with b6 but then there is knight a1 hitting the queen so you can't do that so you go first uh, rook a2 also very good is rook a4 the point is you cannot win this because of rook a1 and you lose a piece same with rook a2 i play my rook here you take this i double and i'm better but the moment she, she got a little worried she took here this i mean she was of course hoping that if you take here then i'll take on b3 i no longer need to worry because my bishop is no no longer hanging and this is winning but of course i mean just to point out this is bad because of c3 hanging so the move was rook a2 but after takes black found a good move knight a1 take back and now queen a5 and you know the thing is that this position is so good for black there are very few chances if she goes bishop c5 there are very few chances that she would lose it but here came the inexplicable error e5 by letting ye she was just i think she her bro brain froze for a second or so knight f5 and uh, suddenly she was lost because i guess she might have thought bishop c7 but missed that there is knight e7 and take this pawn and so after this, bishop f8, bishop e5, rook b5. What the difference in this position from the previous one where the pawn is on e6 like here is that these pieces are all not un are all uncomfortable because e5 can come at the right moment. d4 can be pushed. But once you have traded this here, now there is no e5 the d4 square is in your control c3 is very strong so after g4 you will see that white is just very calm knight came here and see this knight defends this knight there's no way to dislodge them this pawn is weak and ju wenjun knew that this position is winning she just had to calmly improve her king and at the right moment just pluck the pawn out. Letting ye tried her best to get active, but by now the position was just lost. The d pawn was strong; it was moving forward. The knights are just too nimble. You know they are they're moving here and there. And uh, I think Ju Wenjun was very 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 calm at this point. She was like. There's no way in the world I'm giving this up because this meant that she would win the world title. And when she played her rook to b8, late Ting Yi resigned. And with that, Ju Wenjun became the world champion for the fourth time. Brilliant match. In fact, I would say that wonderfully fought by both of them. Uh, such great games, such high quality. And I hope that you were able to learn a bit from this video. You were also able to guess the moves. You are also able to understand what happened in this epic encounter. Now Ju Wenjun will once again fight someone who will come through the candidates to, to take away her title. But for now, she's the queen of chess and a huge congratulations to her, her team, also to Hari Krishna who helped her. Uh, this is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye.